Thank you, Ben. God bless. Hello, New Zealand. You can be seated. Great to be with you. And there's no doubt you are the best looking church in City Point. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And uh, it is great to be with you today. Uh, like Ben said, we've been uh, in the United States the last uh, couple of months uh, ministering over there. And since COVID's all sort of changed everything, people are asking us back to speak, and our churches are growing. And as we move out of the COVID fog, who knows there was a COVID fog, uh, into a very unpredictable world right now. I, uh, I find it fascinating the days that we live in. And not only do we have rumors of wars, we actually have wars. Uh, we have issues with uh, pushback on uh, spiritual principles and Bible truths, and, and the church is in a different spot. We live in a, in a day where uh, that was, was right is now wrong, and that was wrong is now right. Uh, so it's interesting days right around. And I think as the church, we've got to be prepared uh, for the days ahead. And I say that very confidently because history tells me wherever the world gets dark, the church gets stronger. And uh, therefore, I see great days ahead. I see the hand of God upon us in a very powerful way. Uh, there are a lot of people right now who are, are fearful of the future, uh, confused about the future, not sure what's going to happen here in, in, in the city of Auckland, New Zealand, Australia, and around the world, and they're looking for answers. So I, I can't think of a better time to be confident in being a believer in Jesus Christ. I, I've looked at all the answers, and I can assure you that politics is not the answer. It doesn't matter who's in power, Jesus is still King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And uh, I wish science was the answer, and we are pretty smart, but we still can't get on with one another. Uh, so I, I know that as I look around at all the alternatives we have to follow, uh, there's only one that, that stays the course, and that's Jesus Christ. And uh, I, I'm so, go so glad that he found me, and I'm a part of his bringing him to the generation that I live in. There are no other answers. I mean, we've been at war ever since we've been created, since the fall of Adam and Eve. And it uh, doesn't matter how smart we get. And, look, and we're smart. I've got a watch on my hand right now uh, that I can make a phone call on. Now, I, I think that, does anybody remember Dick Tracy? Well, everybody over 60 goes, yeah, I remember Dick Tracy. Everybody said, no, I did it. Well, before the Avengers came to power, there was one superhero. His name was Dick Tracy. And his superpower was that he had a, a watch on his wrist that he could make phone calls through. That was his superpower. Um, and, uh, and, and I, I remember that cartoon so clearly, and as soon as I could make a, a, a phone call on a watch, I bought one. Um, and I think how smart that we are. Like, I, I can, if, if Lee rings me while I'm surfing, I mean, she can call me while I'm in the surf. Not that I would answer it, but she can call me. <laughs> uh, that's how clever we are. But again, as you look around the world, we still can't get on with one another. There's still corruption for power and greed and all those things. And therefore, I know that Jesus is our, really our only hope. Um, and I, I want to bring that to remind all of us of that today, uh, that you are and have the answer within you. Right. His name is Jesus. And uh, we need to stand brighter and stronger than we ever have because we have the answer for future generations. Um, as we come out of COVID fog, and that's what I call it, COVID fog was like the worst Netflix series I've ever could have imagined, COVID. And, um, and, and as we come out of that, I want us to get us back on, on course again as we reestablish who we are and what God's doing. Uh, it was sort of a, a pullback in COVID. We all sort of were, were trying to survive and getting ready for the future and holding on. But now we're through that. Uh, we need to be prepared and ready for the great days ahead. And I don't want us to lose sight of that, that the mission of God has not changed. We are to bring Jesus to our generation and beyond. And uh, therefore, I, I'm going to speak to you about uh, vision today. Um, and it's important as we move into 23, and now we're going to 24. And I've called today's message, Without Vision, You dot, dot, dot. Without Vision, You dot, dot, dot. And I think one of the scariest things that came out of COVID is that people forgot their purpose. They, 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 they went off course. They didn't know what mission they were on. They really had no vision for their lives. They were just sort of getting through. And I think it's really important that we understand that we are called by God to have purpose and vision and mission in our lives. And without vision, certain things happen. I think most people underestimate the power and the need to have vision for their personal life and also for their church life or their Christianity. See, vision's not complicated. Obviously, if you have vision, you can see. That makes sense. That's what vision is. It's the ability 
to see. And I think as believers, we're not to lose our vision because it takes us down a wrong pathway. Vision is looking forward. It's seeing where we want to be. It's looking forward to seeing who we want to be in the future. It's having a picture of where I'm heading in life. What God's called you to do is important for your well-being as a believer and as a person. And the Bible is very clear, and it warns us about what happens when we don't have vision, when we lose vision, when we lose purpose and, and mission. Let's have a look at Proverbs 29, verse 18. <clears throat> For where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. But he that keeps the burdens or the law, not the burdens, the law of God, which are not burdensome, happy is he. If you don't have vision, you cast off restraint. And I find it fascinating that in three different translations of the Bible, it has three different meanings here. They're, they're different, but the same. This one in the ASV says, without vision, you, people cast off restraint. Another version says, without vision, you wander aimlessly. Another version says, without vision, you perish. So you've got three different translations, a little bit different, but really all the same, saying without vision, you're in the wrong pathway, going in the wrong direction, and bad things are going to happen. See, when you read the, um, the account of the Israelites coming out of Egypt, I find it fascinating that God gives them a picture of the promised land. There's a, there's a vision, but things get a little tough on the way, and they start to lose their picture, or they start to lose their vision of what God said. And uh, if you notice, the first thing they do as they get into the wilderness, they start to cast off restraint. Um, remember the, the, where, where, where it happens is, as Israel is going out of Egypt and uh, the, the, uh, the Egyptians are following them and uh, there's a Red Sea or a sea in front of them and we see the incredible miracle of Moses splitting the Red Sea. I don't know about you, but I think that is a reasonable miracle. I mean, if Ben just went down the road and split a creek, we'd be excited. We'd be going, you're the man. So the, splitting the Red Sea is a big deal as far as I can tell. As a matter of fact, somebody sent me a, a card, a greeting card, way back, and I still got it on my desk as such a reminder. And it's a, a cartoon on the front of Moses splitting the Red Sea. He's got his hands up like this, and uh, he's got the Israelites to the left, Israelites to the right. Um, the Red Sea split in half. There's a tunnel down the middle, and he's looking to the left, and the caption reads, what do you mean it's a bit muddy? <laughs> and sometimes we can miss the bigness of God by looking at the details and complaining about things that really don't matter. But I find it fascinating that here we have Moses splitting the Red Sea and an incredible miracle takes place. They are, they are able to get away from the Egyptians. God has set them free. They've got a new start in life. And yet, listen to this, yet, Within weeks of that, they decide to build a golden calf and worship another God. See, what happens is not that you don't see the miracles of God, but when you lose your vision of where God's taking you, you start to cast off restraint. You start to do things you shouldn't do. And then the, then the Bible goes on that they wandered aimlessly. It was a 40-year trip that should have taken them 12 months. So here we have a people who have lost their vision, the, the promises of God, the promised land of God. Now they've cast off restraint. They're wandering aimlessly. And if you know the end of the story, before they get into the promised land, they've perished. Only a very small amount of the original people make it into the promised land of God. So without vision, what happens? You will cast off restraint. Without vision, you will wander aimlessly. And without vision, you will perish. You might be alive, but you won't have a life. So therefore, vision is extremely important to every one of us. So if the results of no vision is that they cast off restraint, they wander aimlessly, and they perish, then think of it the other way and think about if you have vision, what's going to happen? You're going to cast on restraint. You won't wander aimlessly. You'll live life with direction and purpose. And you will not perish, but you will have a life. So therefore, if we're living life, you know, like, yeah, whatever happens will happen sort of mode, we're in a place now we're vulnerable to the enemy's deceptions. You'll start doing things you didn't want to do. You'll end up going places you didn't want to go. At the end of the day, you're going to feel terrible about life and not have the life God wants for you. So number one today, 
Vision dictates your actions. <coughs> vision dictates your actions. No vision, you cast off restraint. With vision, you become more disciplined. You become a person that's more godly. Uh, no vision, the Israelites bit a golden calf. No vision, Peter denies Jesus his best friend, best friend three times. Why? Because did he hate Jesus? No, he'd lost vision. And when you lose vision, you wander aimlessly. Judas uh, betrayed Jesus because he lost vision for the future. And it's no different for you and I. To keep strong in this Christian journey, you've got to keep your vision strong about who God's called you to be, who you're meant to be, and where you're going in life. So understand, God's plan to deal with sin is not law, all right? You, you can try being a good Christian, but you're not going to make it through. Uh, it's not law, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, has never worked for humankind. That's why a Savior had to be sent. There was, there was all the commandments in the Old Testament, just don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. And after a thousand of years, God said, well, that's not working, we need to send a Savior. Jesus comes to deal with our problems. So... For us to deal with sin is not about the law, it's actually about vision. You see, legalism, law, thou shalt not, doesn't stop people from sinning. As a matter of fact, in our current situation, I think it almost draws us towards sin when we're told we can't do something. You know, it's um, Adam and Eve are in the garden. It was all theirs, except for one tree. Don't touch one tree. Just one, the rest is yours. It's like, it's like putting kids in a, in a room full of presents and toys and just saying, don't touch that one. You know which one they're going to go to straight away? That one. Because there's, there's, there's a sense in us that it almost law tempts us. Like, I, I know the law over here is that, you know, on roads, and maybe it's not, maybe it's 50 kilometers an hour in the streets here, or 100, is it 100 on the highways? Uh, if it's 100, well, then you know you can probably get away doing 110. And we're the Christians. It, we, we know we can just get away with it. You know, there's this sense of whatever the rule is, there's a sense in us that just draws us towards, man, just breaking that a little bit. Uh, I mean, you think about your, your traffic lights. Uh, green means go. Uh, yellow means speed up. Um, <laughs> red means stop. But think about it. The stoplight has no power to stop you, all right? That's not the issue. The, the, the red light has no power to stop you. What stops you is a vision of the photo coming in the mail. <laughs> That's what stops you. It's vision that keeps you on track. If I was to paint this pulpit a new color and put it in the foyer and put a sign on it that said, wet paint, do not touch, you know what's going to happen, don't you? Everybody's going to walk past and go, oh, yeah, so it is. <laughs> it's almost like thou shalt not tempt us into breaking. It's almost this, this uncontrollable fallenness in humankind that, that, that the rules are there that we know, but we send a, you know, you know when we had teenage boys uh, grow, and they were growing up, and it's funny when teenage boys get, you know, like, testosterone starts to get, well, it becomes an issue with water. Uh, they can't shower. Um, because they know if they shower, their skin will fall off. And, and, and uh, it becomes an issue. So you've got this thing now, and, not, you know, fathers and mothers handle it differently. And if they're not showering, the fathers just say, just leave them in their room. Let them rot to death in there. And they stink themselves out. And animals will grow in their hair. And but mothers aren't they? They'll, they'll get in that shower. You get it. You get it. No, no. You under, turn it on. You know. And, and there's this fight. And I remember for years there's this battle of the law. Thou shalt shower. <laughs> and then one day, of his own accord, my boy has a one-hour shower. <laughs> no one told him to. What changed? He had a vision. Well, he saw a vision. A UFO, an unidentified female object. <laughs> and in what three years of the law couldn't change? One vision <laughs> changed it all. 
Now think about it, great sports people, no one can make them train, but why do they train? Because they have a vision. And I want to tell you, in our personal life, it's the same. It's not about, I don't want to sin, or I don't want to do wrong things, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. It's about what is God calling me to do? And when you have vision, that takes the power away from the sin. And if you have vi no vision, you will cast off restraint. But if you have vision and mission and purpose, you will cast on restraint. So for our personal lives, we've got to have a picture. Don't say, oh, I don't want to do it. No, no, find out what God wants you to do, who you want to be, who God's calling you to be, and that will start to alleviate the pressure of sin around your life. Vision dictates your actions. Not law, vision. Don't try harder, draw closer. Second thing about vision, it dictates your direction. Not just your actions, but your direction in life. No vision, you will wander aimlessly. And I'm, I want to tell you, if I could see a problem in the church around the world is believers wandering aimlessly. Because without vision, they wander. But with vision, you start to get direction and purpose. Um, imagine getting into a taxi cab in New York City, the biggest, one of the biggest cities in the world, and getting in the taxi cab, looking at the driver and saying this to him, take me. <coughs> That's what he said, take me. You know he's going to take you for every dollar that you owe. He will drive you around for hours and hours and hours. You'll spend a lot of money and end up nowhere. Do you know I see a lot of people do life like that? They use up a lot of time, spend a lot of money, and end up nowhere in particular. Because without vision, you wander aimlessly. You just sort of get up in the morning and hope the day works out. There's no purpose for it. There's no reason. There's, there's a sense of whatever, whatever, case sarah, sarah, whatever will be, akuna matata. But it leads you nowhere. So many people do this with their lives. A lot of time, a lot of money, <laughs> and nowhere in particular. Don't be that person. Let's not be a person without vision. Let's be a person with vision. Because when we're with vision, you will have direction in your life. You'll have purpose in your life. Vision gives you both those things, direction and purpose. Being dissatisfied with your current reality doesn't mean you will change it. I watch people complain all the time about what they're going through. You know, my marriage is this, or I'm overweight, or I haven't got that, or I'm not got any money. And they, they complain, but I want to tell you, it seems to me that being dissatisfied is not going to change your life. There's complain. What changes people is not what they don't want to be, it's who they want to be. So it's not about what you don't want, it's about what you do want. And that's what vision is. It's not saying, I, I, you know, if you're on a diet, it's not about getting back to you know, zero. It's about making a, a decision to live a healthier, better life. Um, you know, I want to lose 10 kilos, you'll lose it, then you'll find it. <laughs> then you'll lose it and you'll find it. You've got to make a decision about not out of debt, but what do I want to be when I am out of debt? Because being out of debt doesn't move us. Lack of vision doesn't move us. Vision moves us. What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What do you want to accomplish in your life? What sort of person do you want to be? Vision is not to lose 10 kilos. Vision is living a healthier, better life because now everybody wins from it. Vision dictates your direction in life. Number one, Vision dictates your actions. It's not about trying to be a good believer. It's having a vision and purpose in your life that casts or keeps sin away from our lives. Number two, vision. Without it, you're going to wander aimlessly, end up nowhere in particular, spend a lot of money, waste a lot of time, and by the end of your road, you're going to go, what the heck was that all about? No, vision gives us a purpose and a direction in life. And the third thing about vision, it dictates your distance. <coughs> so your actions, your direction, and your distance. No vision, the Bible says, my people perish. So with vision, you will have a life and have more of a life or a life more abundant. I, I, all those that, that die have lived, but not all those live, sorry, all those that have died, sorry, I'm going to make that up myself now. <laughs> all that live die, but Sally, all that have died have not really lived. In other words, we, we can be alive, but we're not actually living the best God has for us. 
And that's generally due to lack of vision. It's, it's like we're the frozen chosen or we're, we're, the, we're, we're alive on the outside but dead on the inside because we don't have vision because di- vision dictates your distance. The book of Matthew chapter 16 says this, verse 24. And I think it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. <clears throat> and Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Now understand this that Jesus is not saying that we are to go to the cross. He says we're to pick up our cross. Jesus' purpose and mission in life was go to the cross and be crucified and die for our salvation. That was his cross. But what he's saying to us, not to go and pick up a cross, it's go and pick up your purpose, pick up your calling, pick up your cross, what God's called you to be. Jesus was called to go to the cross. We're called to pick up our cross. Our purpose, our direction, our mission. And follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I find that a fascinating scripture. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So many powerful things in here. And I think we've got to see the picture of what God's trying to say here is that if we're going to make it to the end, if we're going to stay believers for the duration, if we're going to make a difference on the way, we're to pick up our cross and follow him. Follow him. Follow him into the purpose he has for you. And if we don't find that purpose, that mission, that that vision for our lives, we're going to see ourselves in the wrong place. Then he says, deny yourself. You know, don't, don't, don't consider your own life. And I find it fascinating that people who try and consider their life above all things, miss out on the life that God has for them. So important. People are trying to save their life. That's why people don't give in the offering. They're trying to save their life. They're thinking, well, if I give, I won't have. But God's saying, no, 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 no. If you lose your life for my sake, you're going to find the very life you wanted. It's like people don't want to get on airplanes because they're trying to save their life. People are scared of flying. I said, don't be scared of flying. Be scared of crashing. Flying is not the problem. But we don't do things because we're trying to save our lives. And Jesus says, no, no, no. He says, trust me, lose your life, and you'll find the life you've always wanted. And therefore, it's important that we pick up the vision or the mission that God has for our lives. And, And I find that vision dictates your distance. If you don't have vision, then challenges and problems become walls, not stepping stones. So if you, don't, if you have a vision or a mission or a plan or a purpose, then when things go wrong, it's not the end. It's seeing that God's given you an opportunity to step through those things and be greater than you were before. But if you don't have a vision, you give up. Well, what, where's God in this? How come this is happening to me? And I'm going to tell you, doesn't matter what you're going through in life, the question should never be, why me? It has no answer. The question should always be, what now, Jesus? If you've got a mission or a vision and a purpose, that's always the answer, the question that comes into your heart. It's not, why me? It's, what now, Jesus? Because vision dictates your distance. Imagine if Ben got up here and preached like this. The Antichrist is taking over the world. There's no hope. The church is done for. Run to the hills. Uh, Now we're going to receive the offering. What the heck are you talking about, man? See, but there's no vision. It's why bother? There's no reason to get involved, to give, to be involved, to live it out. The truth is we live by design or default. No vision, you will live your life by default. It'll just happen. But with vision, your future is not a place where you go. It's a place you create. Let me say that again. With vision, your future is not a place you go. It's a place you create because that's what you're aiming for. If you don't have vision, you'll end up in your future and it won't be the future you always wanted because you'll end up there by default. So what's your vision? What's your purpose? Think about 2024. What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What what do you want to achieve? Don't just turn up in 24 and go, here we go, another year. Let's see what happens this year. No, no, don't be that person because without vision, you cast off restraint. Without vision, you wander aimlessly. Without vision, you perish. But with vision, it all starts to come back together. So important, even for your own personal lives. I mean, I remember my report card at high school 
1974. As a matter of fact, I just went to a 50-year rugby reunion. We won the premiership in 1973 at my high school. And so uh, they called the reunion and they got us, found us, most of us, I mean, eight had already passed on out of the team. And uh, we got together and celebrated how we won the premiership in rugby back in 1973. But in 1974, I finished school and uh, my report card, and I did all right at high school. But what it said in the comment section was, Mark will do really well at whatever he wants to do really well at. And that's what vision does. What's your vision? Whatever you really want to do is what you'll do well in. But you've got to have something you really want to do well in. You've got to want to become somebody. You've got to want to change something. You've got to, be, you've got to want to see something different. That's what vision does. It takes you into your future. It's amazing how vision uh, can change things. I mean, I, I'm, I've got a really busy schedule in life, and I do lots of different things. And I've got a whole, like, you know, my management thing and time management. And, and yet vision can get you through things you never thought were possible. I can be so busy and then somebody says, Pastor Mark, I want to take you away three days golfing at Kidnappers. A miracle takes place in my schedule. Because you do what you have a vision for. Vision dictates your actions as a believer. Don't just try harder. Find God. What's He want you to do? Vision will dictate your direction in life. Don't wander aimlessly, spending a lot of money, using up a lot of time and not making any difference on the way through. And let's make it to the end. Let's endure to the end, believers, because vision dictates your distance. And there are a lot of people aren't in church right now, just like the Israelites. They weren't bad people. They just lost their vision. They just lost their picture of what God's called them to be and do. Your vision or lack of it dictates your distance. Whether you last, whether you make it to the end, whether you finish your race. race. No vision, you wander aimlessly. No vision, you cast off restraint. No vision, you perish on the inside. With vision, we stay on course, we're disciplined, and we have life abundant. What do you see for your future? So finish that. What do you, what do you see for 2024? What's God calling you to be and do? Not sure? Connect to what God's doing in this house and they'll help you find who God's called you to be. Because that's why God has His church to help us find our purpose and our direction in life. Let's go into 2024 excited about what God's about to do because I want to tell you, God is going to show up and show off. We're going to see a move of God in the next bunch of years here, here and around the world that has not been seen for quite a while because as the world gets darker, the church gets stronger and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Let's be the flame of hope to the people around us. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you today for every person in this house. God, I pray that you'd sense or re reignite mission, that the fog of COVID would be lifted and again see the purpose and the reason we, the church, are here. We, the person, the believer is here. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples, make disciples of all nations. And I pray, God, as we become those disciples, he said, if, if, we become, if we disciple others, you will build your church. And we thank you, Lord, that we can be a part of this great move, this great end time move of God. We thank you that you're here powerfully. And God, I pray that vision and mission and purpose would reignite in people. And that see, they are called by God for this time in history to bring Him, the Savior of the world, to the generation that they live in. God, let them stand strong in these days and let the glory of God unfold around them, in them, and through them. With eyes closed.